This is Express Radio. Yo, DJ Punk, this party. New term. Why not try something new? Start your journey with Cardiff Societies with Express Radio and CUTV. Society Insights. Society Insights. Precious 2020 with Express Radio. Society Insights. Hello and welcome back to Society Insights with me, Angus Mitchell, on behalf of Express Radio and CUTV. And today I'm joined with Fred Julian. Fred, how are you? You right? Hello, I'm doing very well, thank you, Angus. And am I right in saying you're the president of the Wet Dippers Wild Swimming Society? That is correct, yeah. Um, I got that. Quite a mouthful, I know. Um, <laughs> the origins of the name do escape me, but yeah, that's right. It, well, it, it makes sense. Um, uh, do you want to tell us a bit about your society and what you guys do? So, in short, the, uh, the clues in the name were Wild Swimming Society, which uh, for the uninitiated essentially means we swim in nature. Um, in all sorts of bodies of water, be it rivers, lakes, oceans, waterfalls, you name it, uh, we've done it or will be doing it. Um, and it's essentially a very chill, relaxed affair. Uh, we find a nice looking spot, we preach it out to the group, uh, get everybody together, and then just have a nice little splash for anywhere from uh, yeah, anywhere from two to 20 minutes in the water, depending on how cold it is. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's obviously uh, one of the aspects you've got to think about, um, how cold it can be. Obviously, having a wet dipper society in somewhere like Greece would be a huge popularity, but I can't imagine it's as popular in Wales. But do you want to tell us a bit about the benefits of wild swimming? Because I know there are so many. So there's, um, it's, there's a lot of health benefits relating to it. Um, there's uh, the physical side, you know, the, you're doing a sport, you're doing an exercise, so you're getting, you're building up your cardio and whatnot doing that. Even though we're not, you know, a professional swimming society, we're not doing laps around the rivers, we're just having a nice fun splash about. Um, of course, uh, better circulation as well. I mean, it's cold, your heart's got to get that blood pumping. But then it's also got incredible mental health benefits which is extremely important during this current climate. Um, and not just because, you know, it's, well, I say it's because it's so cold you can't feel anything else. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. no, it's um, both the rhythmic nature of swimming. You kind of get yourself into a nice little almost meditative headspace, perhaps. Um, but also the endorphins that get released after you get out of the water. It's that warm, fuzzy feeling as you're warming up in jumpers and a hot chocolate. It's, it's tough to beat. Obviously, there is all the fun aspects of it, but obviously as well, the health and safety side. Do you want to speak a bit about that? Because I'm sure people joining would like to know, like, do you have to be certainly trained to get involved or is there some kind of test you guys do? So there's um, there's no training. Anyone can come along, uh, but you do need to be able to swim. Like, we're not, we don't teach people that. Um, we have, in previous years, we've you've had to take a swim test down the local swimming pool before we, so we can see that, hey, you're not going to drown. Uh, but uh, this year we've managed to change that. So we've now got a swimming ability agreement, which is just a little box that you tick on our student union website, which just confirms that you are an intermediate level swimmer able to look after yourself. Um, but even then, we don't just throw you to the fishes. Uh, we all always aim to have uh, at least one trained lifeguard as part of the group on every dip we go on to. Uh, we always make everybody aware of the relevant risks uh, and committee members always make sure to check the water that we're going to swim in prior to everyone else getting in. So be that for checking out for rip tides in uh, beach spots or checking the flow of water in rivers, looking for concealed debris. Uh, we make, like to make sure everyone's safe. And then, you know, in case the worst does happen, we do have emergency procedures. We've got little uh, life belty kind of things on hand, emergency blankets, that sort yeah. of stuff. And um, speaking of the different spots, I know you, uh, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, so you're talking about beaches. Is there like a local area? Obviously with coronavirus, I can imagine it's changed a bit. Do you want to explain a bit about whereabouts do you guys go? Yeah, so in previous years, basically the the world was our oyster in terms of where we went um we, we've only recently gotten the approval to finally go to beaches so those were going to be a big feature of this year unfortunately the lockdown in particular has affected that um because there are a couple of beaches in cardiff but they're not the nicest to go to no. um so unfortunately that does mean we are for the foreseeable future limited to cardiff county for our i'll give it a go which is at the end of the month uh, we're taking everybody to a spot upstream of the River Taff, 
uh, with some nice um, snow moving bit of water, one of the nice little kind of rocky beaches jutting out into it. So not your conventional beach, but the closest we can get to it in the current climate. Um, it do- there's no way around it. It does suck, everything going on with lockdown. But like you said, that silver lining of forcing you guys, not necessarily out of your comfort zone, but having to put a little bit more effort in, or, okay, where are these niche areas we can go, rather than just picking up a whales book and going, okay, these are nice, these are nice, these are nice, you know? Um, finding these like really niche places just on our doorstep, like you said. Yeah, I've been, it's, um, ever since things started going a bit south around April, May, I realised... We're probably not going to have access to the minibuses, which we've relied on in previous years to get us to our more exotic locations, which means for the past couple of months already, I've been looking at uh, more local spots like outside of Cardiff, but uh, public transport accessible ones so that we can have as many people as we can coming to our dips and not just those who have cars. Obviously, with societies, there's always the um, what you guys actually do, the activity, and also a social side. Um, again, disclaimer with coronavirus, it's, um, it must be pretty hard. I know I'm probably throwing you under the bus here, but um, do you guys do you guys have any plans social wise um, for the coming year? Our first social is on the 17th of Saturday, which is uh, going to be another meet up in person in a social distance manner in Butte Park. Uh, which would just be an opportunity to do a bit of lighthearted paddling more than swimming. Um, again, a chance to meet the committee, to meet other people, um, while also having a few drinks on the side, perhaps. But it's, uh, I like to stress, we're a very kind of wholesome kind of society. I don't feel, we're not the let's go binge drinking and yeah, take yeah. a swim sort of thing. So it's certainly something that's open for everyone. Yeah, I love that though. I love pushing yourself as a wholesome society. I can imagine that's that's quite a nice society to be a part of, especially in these times. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Um, and like I said, so we are also doing virtual events. So yeah. that will be a standard pub quizzes, um, but then also other games as well. We've got a couple of, uh, I think it's called Jackbox Party is one of them which is a fun mobile game, you can, well, fun game you can play both over the internet and your phone. Great chance to get everybody involved in that That's together. Great. Bit of icebreaker. Bit of icebreaker, yeah. Um, in previous years, we've done uh, board game nights, and so we're going to try and figure out a way to virtualize that. Uh, right, right, nice. <laughs> Got to figure out the kinks to that one, yeah. And um, you did mention about uh, when the swims were. Ev- so that's the, is that always going to be at the end of October? Uh, sorry, not the end of October. End end of every month. So last year we did one swim a month, which was always the last Sunday of the month. So it's a nice, easy day to remember. We're going to continue yeah. doing that this year, um, but just due to the high demand of people who want to come along and our restrictions on how many we can go at a time. We're going to add a second dip each month, which will be in the middle Sunday of the month, if that makes sense. Um, So halfway through, so it will be like every other week, essentially, we'll be going on a dip in some capacity. Um, As it stands, because of our, our, our limited selection of spots to swim, there may be a bit of repetition in locations we go to, but... Like I said, we sold out on the Give It A Go already, so we're going to have to do another one of those (laughs) soon anyway (laughs) for those who missed out. Uh, But yeah, twice a month. um, But your best bet is to just follow us on our Facebook page uh, because that's where we'll be posting our most regular updates on where we're going, what's going on, when we have some fun new stash in for you to buy, all sorts. (laughs) And uh, and for those uh, listening and watching, do you want to plug that Facebook? So is it just Wet Dippers or...? How did they find you on Facebook? Uh, no, it's uh, the Wet Dippers Wild Swimming Society. But if you search Wet Dippers, it'll probably pop up. There's not that many groups with the same name, I'd imagine. <laughs> it's a niche name, yeah. Um, but yeah, it doesn't cost anything to join that page. Um, to join okay. the society itself, uh, it costs only £3, uh, which is steal of a deal, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> now, Fred, give me three reasons why somebody should join Wet Dippers Wild Swimming Society. Okay, it's uh, reason number one. It's a fantastically wholesome community. Uh, I'm not going to give the corny corporate line that we're a family, but we're probably as close as you can come to that. Um, everybody's really nice and welcoming. There's no pressure to even swim if you turn up. If you want to just turn up to uh, find a nice spot in Wales that you hadn't heard about before. Um, Point number two, uh, we have some fantastic stash on offer. Um, aside from, you know, your classic beanies, uh, we've got some really, well, I have actually drink from them now, some really lovely high quality mugs you can grab. Uh, and then reason number three, uh, the aforementioned health benefits, um, not just physically, 
but mentally, especially now during lockdown, you're cooped up in your room and your house enough. It's, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to just get out enjoy a bit of nature and have fun while doing it. There you go. Well, Fred, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, this has been Society Insights with Wet Dippers Wild Swimming Society. Cheers, Fred.